Welcome back to the Greener. Welcome back to the Greener Lawn. Today you can see that the turf is still yellow. It's not green yet, but there are things that we can be doing in our yard at this time of year. Today I'm going to be doing a soil sample and reading the results with John Perry. Stay tuned. <music> I had a few comments uh, from Jeremy at uh, Greener Lawn. He was out working in his flower beds um, the other day and was taking note of the weeds that were out there and he sent me a couple of messages about them, um, which I answered in the comments of the last video in the part two of the series. And um, it was dandelion, um, Canada thistle, uh, and I can't remember what the other one was. I think some bindweed, perhaps. So the answer to his question is those were actually all indicators of the same thing. That's a low available soil calcium, and that's what this particular video is going to be about. And I had a lot of bindweed or morning glory, whichever you like to call it. It is really predominant in this area because it was filled just three years ago, and now it's a housing development. So in here, I had a lot of bindweed. Over here in my beds, you can see a lot of dandelions that are popping up. And there has been some thistle that's been in here also. So these are indicators, according to John, that I have low calcium. So that's the reason why I'm gonna be doing these soil tests and seeing what I can improve to help with all these weeds that are sprouting up in my yard. These particular plants that I mentioned today and uh, the images that were coming across the screen there so that you can identify them if you see them, they are indicative of low calcium. And if you've had a soil report done, if you've taken a look at it, if you've been battling these particular kinds of weeds um, and your soil report, uh, report hasn't shown like your uh, base saturations for cal, mag, potassium, um, that those would be important to see in a test because we could be doing something as simply as adding a few pounds of, of gypsum or, or a, of dolomitic lime, or, you know, it could be a lot. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking a lot of core samples throughout my yard in different areas, up to 10 to 12 of them, to see what the soil holds, what the nutrients are inside of it. Same thing up here in my beds, I'm going to take several different samples in different areas to see what these beds hold. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to get a container, like a little bucket, a little bowl, something like that, so that you can put your samples in. So I'm actually just gonna use a plastic bag. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take a couple of core samples about if it's established turf as this is, you take the sample about three inches deep. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna dig down. As I've gone through this, I've just tried to make sure that I haven't put any earthworms in here. I've seen several as I've been doing it, and uh, this little guy snuck in. to mix all these up so that all the samples are all mixed together.
You've got mail. Hey, what's up, Jeremy? Thanks for sending me those soil samples. Uh, good continuation off those questions that you had sent me before. So um, in looking at them, the few things that stand out are this, and, and I'm going to make a couple speculations that are probably going to make a difference for you going forward. So your pH is absurdly high. There is a lot of tied up calcium. Uh, there is a high amount of potassium. There's a lot of things in there that are going to be very drying to your soil. Um, it looks as though most of that is tied up. So I see like these weeds that you were talking about and being calcium indicators absolutely stands on there because it's so high, there's no other exchanges happening. And so your soil is locked out down um, in these lower sections. Now, um, organic matter was pretty good. Saturations were okay, mildly off, but pH was off the charts. And what's going to have to happen is sulfur. Sulfur is going to have to happen. Um, typically, it's not recommended on growing turf to do more than 10 pounds of sulfur per thousand annually. You can split that up. It takes forever to start working, but you're going to need like 15, 20, maybe even 25 pounds over the course of the next few years to get this corrected. So basically what's going to happen is uh, the sulfur is going to break down through a biological role, not really a chemical reaction. It's going to start to uh, allow some hydrogen exchange with the calcium. Uh, sulfuric acid will form and it'll start to lower the pH. So that's really what's going to have to happen now. Uh, given what's there, Aside from, say, some of the minor elements like um, uh, the magnesium, I don't think the calcium is natural that's in there. I, I feel like that looking uh, on the map of where everything was, that, that that ag land was probably hit with loads and loads of gypsum at some point because it's so close to uh, the salt marshes that I imagine that that was actually coming up and, and causing problems. So sulfur is going to be your friend. Um, one thing that probably happened last year that made a big difference is when you were using the Humic 12 and the aerate um, was it was actually starting to send some of that calcium up into the plant and it might have bled some of it out um, given some of the results that you were getting last year. So, you know, you're going to want to stick to that and don't apply anything uh, with any FOSS in it. You don't need it, um, although that's going to... Right now, it's probably a little tied up because the calcium is so high, but this is more of a pH thing. So as the pH comes down, that FOSS is going to start to release. So there you go, man. Start with that, and um, let's get ready for spring, huh? See ya. Well, that's a lot to digest. When it comes down to the soil, there can be a lot of hidden issues as we now see. I was a person that before I did this soil test didn't think I really needed to do a soil test. When talking with John on that video that I'll link in the card above, I had asked him about some common weeds that I see in my yard. He said it's gonna be a calcium issue, as he explained, and it turned out to be a lot more than just a calcium issue. So doing the soil test, it really opened up my eyes and it opened up my game plan for what I'm gonna be doing in my front yard over the next couple of seasons. It's gonna to have to have a different regimen than my regular regimen that I'm gonna be running. I'm gonna be putting out that regimen as a series or my soil test series, if you wanna follow along. It makes a lot of sense if you know how elements work together. One plays off the other and it affects another is how the whole game is played. So with having high pH, of course it's going to be locking up and causing issues with some other things. If 
finding out that pH, being able to put down some sulfur over a couple of years will really help. I put the sulfur down super early in the year, but in 60 to 90 days, I'm gonna be able to put down another application. But it will all be a part of the fertilizer plan that I put out for this series. And you'll be able to see and follow along with what I'm doing to change it. Feel free to reach out to me with any comments, questions, or concerns you may have regarding your soil, regarding tests, regarding any of these things. I can assist you, I can get you some answers. You can reach me in the comment section below or at Jeremy of the Greener Lawn at gmail.com. I do recommend that you guys use a soil test. If you've never used one, it's good just to know if there's anything that you could be doing better or applying to your yard. I'm Jeremy of the Greener Lawn, Maker Green in 2019. What shenanigans are we having going on here? My shoes are All right, I see shadows. I feel like a groundhog. Next level.